Israelite national curses and Israelite individual blessings. Israelite national curses and Israelite individual blessings. Our keynote scriptures are in Ezekiel chapter 14, verses 12 through 16, which state, the word of Yah came to me saying, son of man, if a land sins against me by acting unfaithfully and I stretch out my hand against it to cut off its supply of food, to send famine upon it, and to cut off from it both man and beast. Then, even if these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, their righteousness could deliver only themselves, declares Adonai Yahweh. Or if I send wild beasts through the land to leave it childless and desolate with no man passing through it for fear of the beast, then as surely as I live, declares Adonai Yahweh, even if these three men were in it, they could not deliver their own sons or daughters. They alone would be delivered, but the land would be desolate. See now. Uh, according to Galatians chapter 3, verse 14, it says, Yahshua has redeemed us from the curse of the law, as stated, quote, Chapter 3, verse 13. Mashiach redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. Also, all Israelites who believe that Yahshua died for our sins, and thereby, because of this belief, we are redeemed from the curse of the law. The question emerges as to why are Israelites as a whole still suffering under the seven groups of curses in Deuteronomy chapter 28. For instance, uh, curse number one, uh, curses upon Israelite family structures, which are described in Deuteronomy 28, 54, such as curses of bad relationships between a man and the mother of his children, causing men to have an evil eye, as stated in verse 54 of Deuteronomy 28, for men to have an evil eye toward the wife of his bosom. Also, curses on relationships between fathers and their children. In verse 54 of Deuteronomy 28, where the father, has an evil eye, as stated, quote, toward the remnant of his children, whom he shall lead. Also, our women, it said, would hate the fathers of their children, and their eye would be evil towards their own children, as stated, quote, verse 56 of Deuteronomy 28, the tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness. Her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom and toward her son and toward her daughter. Curses number two, curses upon Israelite communities, such as community hatred between one another, as described in verse 54, Deuteronomy 28, as stated, quote, so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother. Also, the overall deterioration of our communities in the cities, which includes the suburbs and in the country rural areas where we live as well, as stated in Deuteronomy 28, 16, cursed shalt thou be in the city and cursed shalt thou be in the field. 
Curses number three, uh, economic curses, as stated in Deuteronomy 28, verse 43 through 46, where foreigners profit and advance themselves above us economically, as stated in verses, verse 43 and 44, quote, the stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Also, our community wealth is taken out of our neighborhoods by foreigners, as stated in verse 33 of Deuteronomy 28. Quote, the fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Curses number four. Curses of oppression, as cited in the latter part of Deuteronomy 28, verse 33, which states, regarding overall oppression opposed, imposed upon us, as stated, quote, thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. Also in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 28 through 29, it speaks of the high rate of substance abuse, oppression among us as stated, Yahweh shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart, and thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. Now, the Hebrew word in verse 28, stating madness, mashugam, it also, along with mental health problems, involves as well as chemical and substance abuse or drunkenness as well, that this will be a part of our people's condition. We will be known as an addictive community. And it creates blindness and astonishment of heart. That means we walk without common sense and we're always paranoid. And then verse 29, under the influence of, of these uh, intoxicants, it says thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. How many times we've seen people at noonday groping down the street in our community as though it's darkness, when they are fully uh, covered with sunlight, but yet the circumstances of alcoholism and drug addiction makes them grope in the streets as though they're walking in darkness and they shall not prosper in their ways. They may have talents and abilities, capabilities, but those can never come to fruition. They are also oppressed these days, many of them with gambling addiction. There are some brothers out here and sisters that are always on the slot machine, always buying up all the lottery tickets. And now the gaming uh, books are now available uh, more than ever before. And there are some that I know personally that are so addicted that they can't keep money. They can only get money to use it to spend for more gambling. They sleep in hallways they, of apartment buildings. They sleep under viaducts. They, they, they sleep as homeless because of the madness, the intoxicant of gambling, among, among other intoxicants. Curses number five, curses of health, as described in Deuteronomy 28, verse 22. Yahweh shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever and with an inflammation and with an extreme burning. That consumption has some reference to cancer and other type of uh, sicknesses, including TB, but also that produce fevers 
inflammation from diabetic artery and vein blockage with an extreme burning. And that is in doing, dealing with the uh, neuropathy of the feet and circumstances there that create burning pain. Also, as described in Deuteronomy 28, verse 58, 61, regarding curses of, of health, quote, if thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, Yah, thy Elohim. Then Yah will make thy plagues wonderful or awesome, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sicknesses, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will Yah bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Curses number six, curses of high death and mortality rates. Currently the leading cause of death among our juvenile population is gun violence. Uh, Dr. Williams has more details on those stats than I, and she's present to uh, give us some updates on that. Also, as stated in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45 through 46, it states, quote, moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of Yah the Elohim to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall come upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Also Deuteronomy 28, verse 25 through 26, it states, Yahweh shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shalt be removed unto all the kingdoms of the earth and the carcass and thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air and unto the beast of the earth and no man shall fray them away. Curses number seven, the curse of false religion. As stated in Deuteronomy 28, verse 36, it says, quote, Yahweh shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there shalt thou serve other Elohim, wood and stone, as cited in Deuteronomy 28, verse 64, which states, And Yahweh shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other Elohim, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So tonight, dear ones, beloved, it's very clear that the seven groups of curses in Deuteronomy 28 are very much alive and well among us as a people. Yet Israelites who have returned to the covenant of Yah's laws and commandments and now have the true testimony of Yeshua and have come out of the false Greco-Roman Christianity of the European Gentile church, we nonetheless wonder after our own personal awakening to the truth, we wonder, are we personally still under the curses of the law that we see are still prevalent among our people at large? Particularly as we ponder the meaning of Galatians chapter three, verse 13, which states, Mashiach has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on our, our tree. 
Our lesson tonight is attempting to show that our own personal salvation and redemption through Yeshua's atonement makes us as individuals to be taken from under the curse of the law. But our own individual salvation in Yeshua does not necessarily take away the curses of Israel as a nation unless Israel as a nation comes into the covenant of Yah. And this national removal of the curse of the law from upon the Israelite nation happens in the wilderness of the people, as described in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 20, verses 33 through 38, which state, as I live, saith Yah Elohim, Surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And there will I plead with you face to face like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Mizraim, so will I plead with you, saith Yah Elohim, and I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant, and I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. I will bring them from out forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am Yahweh. Hallelujah. So be it. So it is when Israel as a national entity comes into the new covenant in the wilderness of the people that the prophet Jeremiah speaks about this in Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 1 through 3, which state, at that time, saith Yah, Will I be the Elohim of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people? There saith Yahweh, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. Yahweh hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved you with an everlasting love, Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. And also Jeremiah in chapter 31 continues to speak of the time in the wilderness of the people, that Yahweh will make a new covenant with the Israelite nation, as stated in verses 31 and 34 of Jeremiah 31, which state, Behold, the days come, saith Yah, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Mizraim, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Yahweh, I will put my law in thy inward parts, and write it in your hearts, and will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, No, Yahweh, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith Yahweh, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Hallelujah. So be it. Our master Yahshua spoke of this coming national Israelite new covenant that Jeremiah and Ezekiel both spoke of. And our master said uh, this would happen in the wilderness of the people as they declared it, as they heard it from him, the word of Yah. But our master, when he taught his Talmudim, as recorded in Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 through 
27, as stated, and as they were eating, Yahshua took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the Talmudim, the disciples, and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission, the removal of sins. So when we partake of the master's supper as individuals, we are rehearsing the time in the wilderness of the people. When Yah brings the Israelites as a nation into the bond of the covenant, through confession of faith in the atoning blood, death, burial, and resurrection of Yeshua, which confession of faith redeems us from the curse of the law, as stated in Galatians 3, 13, which again states, Mashiach, Messiah, hath redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, Hallelujah, so be it. Also, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1 through 7 in the Targum text states regarding the time when Yah takes away the curses of Israel as a nation. Quoting now from the ancient Israelite Aramaic Targum text, of Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 1 through 7. Quote, and it shall be when all these words are of blessings or their contraries, which I have set in order before you, shall have come upon you, you will be converted in your hearts to return unto my fear in all the dispersions among the nations where Yahweh will have scattered you. The upright of you will be favored with a blessed repentance, though you have sinned. Yet shall your repentance come up unto the glorious throne of Yah, your Elohim, if you will hearken to his memra, the word of Yah, according to all that I have commanded you this day, you and your children with all your heart and with all your soul. And his memra, his word, he will accept your repentance with favor and will have mercy upon you. And he will gather you again from all the nations whither Yah your Elohim has scattered you. Though you may be dispersed unto the ends of the heavens, from thence will the memra, the word of Yah, Yahshua, the word of Yah, will gather you by the hand of Elijah, the great priest. And from thence he will bring you by the hand of the king, Mashiach. And the word of Yahweh your Elohim will bring you into the land which your fathers possessed by inheritance. And you shall possess it. And he will bless you and increase you more than your fathers. And Yahweh your Elohim will take away the foolishness of your heart and of your children's heart, for he will abolish evil desire from the world and create good desire, which will give you the dictate to love Yah, your Elohim, with all your heart and your soul, that your lives may flow on forevermore. And the word, the memra, the word of Yah, Yahshua, your Elohim will send these curses upon your enemies who have oppressed you in your captivities and such as have hated and persecuted to destroy you. So be it. Hallelujah. So in regards to our lesson tonight entitled Israelite National Curses and Israelite Individual Blessings, we want to encourage all Israelites that even now, before Yah takes the curses of the law off of us as a nation, 
he will take away the curses of the law off of us as individuals by faith in the atonement of Yeshua. Hallelujah, so be it. But our individual redemption through salvation in the blood of Yeshua will only save us as individuals from the curse of the law. But we will continue to see Yah's curses and judgments on Israelites as a nation, even after we personally have been delivered from the curses. We still continue to see Yah's curses and judgments on Israelites as a nation at large. And this will continue until such time as we gather together as a national entity in the wilderness of the people and come together into the new covenant that Jeremiah 31, 31 speaks of, that Yah will make with us as a national entity and not as individuals. For this new covenant is made with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, which represents us as a nation and not as an individual. As stated, behold, the days come, saith Yah, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Hallelujah. So be it. But when we participate in our master's memorial supper as individuals, we are rehearsing the future time in the wilderness of the people when the new covenant through the blood atonement of Yahshua takes away the curses of Israel as a nation. Hallelujah. Yet in the meantime, we should understand that today is the day of salvation, redemption in Yahshua, that even now, before the time of the wilderness of the people, we can now be saved individually from the curses of the law, even though the danger and calamity of the curses of the law runs rampant among this generation of Israelites and our families and our Israelite nation as a people at large. There were three righteous men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, whom Yah spoke of to Ezekiel, the prophet, in the time when Yah judged Jerusalem, who are examples of how individual Israelites who are now saved in the new covenant of Yahshua can survive through the crisis of the judgments of the curse of the law, which is obviously in full effect on our people collectively right now. But as stated in Ezekiel, again in Ezekiel, the word of Yah came again to me saying, son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing, trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it and will break the staff of the bread thereof and will send famine upon it and will cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith Elo, Yahweh Elohim. If I cause noisome beasts to pass through the land and they spoil it so that it be desolate, that no man may pass through because of the beast. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith Yah Elohim, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They shall only be able to be delivered for themselves, but the land shall be a desolation. Or if I bring a sword upon that land and say, sword, go through the land so that I cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men were in it as I live, said Yah Elohim, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. Or if I send a pestilence into that land and pour out my fury upon it in blood to cut off beast from it, man and beast, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, said Yah Elohim, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. 
Selah, so be it. Father, forgive Israel for what we've done. Have mercy, Father Yah. 